Tony Stark back in movie theaters this weekend for Iron Man 3, and he is facing a new terrorist threat, the Mandarin, played by the one and only Sir Ben Kingsley. Now, Tony, he's got souped up armor, not to mention a bunch of lucrative advertising deals, but is that going to be enough to save Gwyneth Paltrow? And oh yeah, civilization. Well, we're going to be talking with Ben Kingsley in a moment, but first, a quick look at what has happened in the Iron Man series so far. Greetings, Iron Man neophytes. Have you managed to avoid seeing any of the Iron Man movies over the last five years, yet for some reason are desperate to jump into Iron Man 3 this Friday? If so, here is your Wall Street Journal approved primer. Tony Stark is a billionaire playboy weapons manufacturer with a bit of a selfish streak. One day he's attacked, captured, dropped in an Afghan cave, and ordered at gunpoint to make a missile for terrorists. But instead, he builds a metallic supersuit and blasts his way to freedom. He returns home to personal assistant Pepper Potts and decides he would rather save people than build weapons. And thus a new suit of armor is made and Iron Man is born. So, after a few cool action sequences, betrayals, and near-death experiences, Tony Stark evolves as a person, inches closer to a relationship with Pepper, and announces to the world that he is a superhero known as Iron Man. When Iron Man 2 rolls around, Tony and Iron Man are beloved by everyone but the US government. The feds want Iron Man suits of their own. Enter rival arms dealer Justin Hammer. He partners up with vengeful Russian genius Ivan Vanko, who also moonlights as the supervillain Whiplash. Never fear, though, as Tony has his own backup. His military buddy, Rhodey Rhodes, outfits an older Iron Man model with some real firepower and becomes War Machine. They do battle with an army of Iron Man knockoff drones, defeat Whiplash, and Tony gets the girl of his dreams. Throughout Iron Man 2, there's a subplot involving super spy group S.H.I.E.L.D. led by Nick Fury. All of this is important because S.H.I.E.L.D. factors heavily in the Avengers. Tony Stark teams up with Marvel heroes Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and the Incredible Hulk to fight off an alien invasion in the heart of New York City. It's big, it's fun, it ends with Tony Stark flying through a portal into deep space to deposit a nuke and blow up an enormous spaceship. This is all important because apparently Iron Man 3 opens with Tony a bit shell-shocked and feeling insecure. So there you go. Everything Iron Man in one sitting. Enjoy the movie this Friday, and please don't complain about spoilers. For the Wall Street Journal, this is super nerd Marshall Crook. Whew, you got all that? All right, now I once thought the scariest voice in superhero action films was Batman's Bane. It would be extremely painful. But Sir Ben Kingsley now, he's given him a run for his money as Mandarin in Iron Man 3. Here's what Kingsley told the Wall Street Journal about playing this terrorist role. I'm Barbara Chai with the Wall Street Journal, and today we have the pleasure of speaking with Sir Ben Kingsley, who stars as the Mandarin in the upcoming blockbuster film Iron Man 3. Thank you so much for joining us, it's Sir Ben. It's a pleasure, Barbara. Welcome. Really. So let's talk about your role as the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. Right. Iron Man 3 is the first Marvel film to open after the blockbuster success of The Avengers, which right. took in more than one and a half billion worldwide. And so far, Iron Man 3 has already grossed more than 250 million worldwide. In your opinion, what is it about these Marvel superhero films that is able to draw in the masses? In my opinion, Barbara, mm -hmm. the human heart that's beating at the center of all these great movies. Uh, it comes from the leading man and the great leading lady. Um, they, they have a relationship that allows them as actors and as characters to be vulnerable to one another. In other words, you care about them because you know that yes, there's an iron suit, Yes, you are protected somehow, but inside that is a frail, vulnerable, simple human being. Uh, so it, it's the combination of the extraordinary and the ordinary, the, the, so that the audience is not dumbed down by the films, but the audience is, is allowed to peep at themselves through the movie. You know, you can relate to the vulnerability, you can relate to the comradeship, you can relate to the love, you can relate to the need for revenge, you can relate to the absurdity, you can relate to the humor, all within the framework of an amazing action movie. Uh, we have to put it in a genre, because that's how we talk about films, but this one is, I think this one's out there on its own. You're a classically trained actor. You spent 15 years at the Royal Shakespeare Company with yeah. Trevor Nunn, is yeah. that correct? You've played Hamlet, Othello. First off, what 
can a classically trained actor such as yourself bring to a superhero franchise like this? Well, um, I'm not going to flatter myself, uh, mm. but there is something about the construction of these films in the writing and in the journey and the arc of each character that I think needs the perspective of the actor to understand the sweep, the arc, the bigger picture. And if, if you are, as I was, lucky enough to be trained in theatre and in, in great classical plays, you have to have, in any part of the play that you're in, you have to be aware of the bigger picture. In the same way that if you are a wonderful, let's say you're a virtuoso violinist mm -hmm. and you're playing a great symphony, you need to know where you are in the symphony. You need to know where those notes are placed. Um, and so I think that kind of classical training helps me to stay within the beautiful, perfect box of each scene, knowing that it is linked with uh, the, the, the greater picture. Mm -hmm. I, I always bring that training to everything I do. Speaking of the bigger picture, you won the Academy Award for playing Gandhi, uh -huh. and on that film, you literally had thousands of extras. You did, did not have anything on CGI, for example. That's so true. what were some of the challenges of switching over to a film such as this, where there is CGI, it's a, it's a huge production, and there are things that you might be battling that aren't actually there? Um, my Mandarin is more isolated from the CGI, but of course he's, he's linked to it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it has to boil down to the director. Mm -hmm. The danger of CGI, because there's nothing there, is to overreact to that which isn't there. You're compensating for its absence. So a director needs, to, he or she needs to temper the performance saying, no, we've got it, that's it. Because when I was performing in my first epic, I, I did actually deliver a political speech a beautiful one to 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. And I, when I walked <laughs> onto the set, 20,000 people stood up and cheered. That wow. hits you like a truck. Mm -hmm. And it changes your body chemistry as an actor to such an extent that there's hardly any acting needed because you're, it's a given. It's a wonderful energy giver. Now, if there's nothing there and they say, don't worry, we'll CGI them in afterwards, you think, well, it hasn't changed my body chemistry. Mm -hmm. The green screen actually hasn't done anything to me. So it's quite a skill on the part of the director to say, whoa, mm. we've got it, no need to compensate. Interesting. Thank you so much for speaking with us today, Sir Ben. Congratulations on the new film, Iron Man 3. Thank you. Now, Iron Man 3, it opens with Tony Stark building several Iron Man suits in his mansion, and the film spins forward from there. But we've gone back to trace the history of Stark's armor through the comic book years. Take a look at this.
All right, so how big a hit will Iron Man be at the box office? Well, advertisers, they are betting big on Mr. Stark. Here is a sample of Iron Man's recent commercial work. System failure, sir. The armor has sustained damage. Power dropping below 5%. You know, it keeps going through my head. Where's my sandwich? Right here at Subway. Power up with the low-fat smokehouse barbecue chicken. Hey, so where's the big project? 